Welcome to The Lock Shop with Nielsen and Hustler, powered by Coolback Canada. Eleven o'clock on a Tuesday morning. Welcome to the Lock Shop, everybody. Thank you very much for being here, Dustin Nielsen, with you, and Huss will be joining us, popping in here from Winnipeg Sports Talk as well. Busy slate in the National Hockey League tonight. We'll certainly get to that. The Buffalo Bills losing last night. The Lock Shop. It was unanimous. We were on the Denver Broncos plus the points yesterday on the Lock Shop. Hopefully, you rode with us on that one. I did not expect them to roll into Buffalo and take that game outright. That was a little surprising. So we'll uh, we'll get into that as we work our way through. Obviously, changes with the offensive coordinator of the Buffalo Bills out as well. Uh, Canadian Football League. We'll double-check on where that line is at and if we saw any movement yesterday. Full slate in the uh, NHL as well. I do want to get Huss's thoughts on um, the National Hockey League trying to speed up overtime a little bit. As well, uh, you Chaz is saying it's shocking that these cans are not opened yet. Yeah, we have we're gonna open them as a group, and we just haven't had the whole group here, and they're not cold yet. So we probably got to make them. Um, probably got to make them cold at some point. With that being said, if you want to see the canning process for the six o'clock or lager, we should have a video coming out. I just watched it with uh, YouTube Trav. He's working on a nice little video that uh, I think you'll find pretty entertaining. So we'll have more details on how you can get your hands on the six o'clock or lager. Obviously, uh, if you are listening right now on TuneIn or at sportstalk.com, make sure you tell your friends about the good content that we're churning out here every single day with Edmonton Sports Talk. And um, yeah, hit us up. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. That's seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine, and we will get to those. Uh, busy slate in the National Hockey League tonight. Play in action in the Association as well. So we've got lots to get to as we work our way through the lock shop today. Just looking at the uh, Buffalo Bills. They have the like they're they're rushing the ball. Let's see here, Buffalo Bills. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. What they're twelfth, they're thirteenth in the league in rushing yards this year. Passing yards. I'm just looking at you know the offensive coordinator was canned here. The Buffalo Bills have the fifth best passing offense yards wise, I guess so far this season. They got seventy percent completion percentage, which is second best in the National Football League. Um, and we can make a case here that the 11 interceptions might be an issue, but that's more of a Josh Allen issue than I would think a scheme issue. Um, so, yeah, interesting, interesting decision. Um, something had to happen. We asked it this morning on our show, like the Buffalo Bills sitting 10th in their conference. Something had to give at that point, and it's obviously a guy that's been in the spotlight a, a number of times for different reasons for the Buffalo Bills. Um, so Dorsey getting axed earlier today. Huss joins us now. Huss, how you doing, buddy? Living the dream, Dusty. Living the dream. Great cup week. See you out there in the hammer this week. And listen, I was a little bit bummed out about the way the weekend ended with the Jets losing and prevented maybe the best perfect week in lock shop history. <laughs> but it was still a very good week. The account was doubled. And then last night, I mean, I don't even know what to say. We didn't get the Shakir catches, which was unfortunate. No, we didn't. But Javante, play of the day, easy cash early on. Broncos with the points, never really in doubt. Never in doubt. We were all on that one. That was easy. But for the Buffalo Bills to go full Saskatchewan Rough Riders on that final play <laughs> and give Will Lutz an extra shot to cash the over three and a half field goals, that was truly the perfect ending <laughs> to the week. Um, <laughs> that game was crazy in so many ways. I know you just mentioned that Dorsey got whacked. Yeah. Which is wild because when you break it down and look at the Bills' offensive performance so far this season, they're still basically top five. I know. I was just looking at it. They're 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 third or fourth in the league in passing yards, seventy um, percent completion percentage, which is second in the league. They're a top half of the league in rushing yards, um, but it just kind of felt like it was always coming for Dorsey, didn't it? And he's doing that really without a great group of weapons. Let's be honest. It's not like that receiving core is extremely deep with the Buffalo Bills. Well, I'd trade the uh, Chiefs receivers for the Bills receivers <laughs> in a heartbeat. That's true, too. Mind but, you, they they both just recently lost to the Denver Broncos. So, well, the, the, Broncos, the, the Broncos are on a bit of a heater right now. Bronco fan is back. Bronco fan 
was feeling like he might even actually bringing his orange and blue back out into the regular rotation now and admitting publicly he is Bronco fan <laughs> once again. So, uh, hey, listen, Russ, Russ is playing his ass off. I mean, is he Mahomes or Lamar at this point? No, but he's still effective. They do have a good running game. And uh, listen, Sean Payton was so thoroughly embarrassed by what this team did in the first half. I think it was inevitable that we would start seeing a, a, a bit of a turnaround. But uh, you know what? Denver's Denver's tough. They're 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 a tough out right now. I mean, the Chiefs have already lost to them. So, uh, but they're done that season series. They're gonna be uh, they're gonna be right in the mix. And Mike, dude, the the playoff picture right now is is crazy. I mean, with the Bills' loss last night, I mean, there are teams that. You know, you did not really expect to maybe be in the mix. Very, very much in the mix. I mean, as it stands right now, the Bengals are on the outside looking in. I mean, the Texans are ahead of them. They've got that final spot. And I was just spending, I got a little sidetracked. That's why I was a couple minutes late. I got <laughs> sidetracked diving into the futures. Yeah. And I have a future bet that we'll have to get to in just a second that I am hammering today. And okay. I, will, I will lay it out why why we like it but the bills right now are 10th in the afc once you factor in i know tiebreaker. yeah 10th and then let's talk about what their schedule is now i mean they just lost to the patriots the bengals and the broncos they've got a home game against the jets but then they're at the eagles at the chiefs home to the cowboys at chargers home to patriots at dolphins they needed to win all of those games. They lost three. I I think the Bills missed the playoffs. I, oh, I mean, I'm just looking right man. now, looking right now at this schedule, and then what everybody else has. It's um. Listen, I, I, I Patrick Mahomes killed the Buffalo Bills in 13 seconds. Josh Allen has never been the same since then. It seems like he's playing every single game as if it is the fourth quarter of that game yeah. against the He's game like against he's stuck he's stuck in a circle there, right? Like is, yeah, no, that was uh that that is that is the take on uh, where the Bills are right now. Um and man, Pittsburgh Cleveland playing next week 6 and 3 6 and 3. I, I just can't get over just how great of a week this was. And I know I made a crack about this yesterday, but this weekend for the Chiefs was just absolutely incredible. I mean, how in the world did they manage to make up ground on everyone? I mean, the Bills losing, and, and now the Bills are basically an afterthought. I mean, the Bills are scraping in for a for a wild card, although if the Bills are able to make the playoffs and say get in in the seventh spot, that would be a, a team that you wouldn't feel great about playing if say you lock down the two seed and you get them in the first round. And I'll put Cincinnati in that same in that same uh same uh, boat. Um there is there is really <laughs> there's a lot going on right now, but to me it's the emergence of the, of the Houston Texans. This is what I'm going to get to with this futures bet. Okay, right well, now. we'll get to that futures bet right away. It just and we're going to stick with the NFL, then we'll get to CFL, we'll get to the National Hockey League. Um Russell Wilson, you mentioned Russell Wilson. He's not Lamar. He's not Patrick Holmes and everything. But Russell Wilson so far this year is second in the league in passing touchdowns. Only Tua and Josh Allen have more. And he's only thrown four interceptions, whereas Josh Allen has thrown 11. Tua's thrown seven. Mahomes has thrown eight. Jalen Hurts has thrown eight. Like, Dak is... Russell Wilson is looking after it, man. Like he's looking after it. He, he's not. He's not throwing the ball for as many yards as these other guys, but he's got more touchdowns and less interceptions than Mahomes. His quarterback efficiency ratings at like a hundred and four. Like he's. I think we just don't want to accept it because it's Russell Wilson, and he's kind of a, a become a little bit of a joke. But he's the driving force behind the Denver Broncos' success here right now with the way that he's managing the football. I think he's cooking. Yeah, Russ is cooking. And he really has sort of been cooking all year long, but they're a much better team right now. I think, you know, Peyton's made some changes. I mean, no one could make a catch earlier in the season. How about that catch by Cortland Sutton? That Sutton, Sutton catch was, was a cheat code, man. Like, that was... One of the best of the year. 
yeah. one of the best of the year. I don't think there's any doubt about it. But uh, it's hilarious because they're four and five, and people had written them off earlier, and justifiably so. I was right there. Um, they gave up 70 in a game. But you know what? Russ has quietly been going out there and doing his part. Yeah. And uh, and as I say, you, you, Sean Payton has enough of a pedigree. You 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 had to imagine this was going to get better at some point. But um, listen, that first half of the season was a disaster for them for the most part. So they're still playing catch up. But as we said, I mean, right now you look at the uh, you look at these standings, and I know the Broncos are sitting there at 14th out of 16 teams, but they are a half game back of Indy and Buffalo at nine and 10. So what do the Broncos have coming up here? So they've got a home game against the Vikings. They've got a home game against the Browns. They go to Houston to take on the Texans. Oh, three road games in a row at Texans, at Chargers, at Lions, home to the Patriots, home to the Chargers, at the Raiders. I mean, there's definitely some winnable games. I think it's still a long shot that they make the playoffs probably sub 20%. But I would say that this team is, I mean, absolutely um, right back in the mix. And when, you know, three wins in a row will do that, especially when many of your contemporaries around you are uh, sort of falling off the, uh, off to the side. All right. Enough waiting around here. What is this Houston Texans future that you want so, us to get on with you, Huss? So folks, if you go to the, uh, if you go to the futures right now, and go down to the winner of the AFC South. Oh. The Texans are plus 280. The Jags are minus 250. This line is off. Like, right now, when you look at the standings, the Jags are in first place. They're one game up on Houston. The Texans have already beaten the Jags in Jacksonville. They play again in two weeks in Houston. If the Texans can win that game, they will make up that ground and they'll own the tiebreaker. And I'm not entirely sure. I guess it would go to, I guess the second tiebreaker is division record. Um, and again, the Texans still have, well, here's the Texans schedule the rest of the way. Yeah, I'm looking They're at home, it right now. It's pretty home to manageable. the Cardinals. The huge game against the Jags. Also at home. I, Another home game. They've got three straight home games against teams that are, well, the Jags and the Cardinals and then the Broncos that we just talked about. Not an easy game, but um, certainly, I mean, that Bronco defense still leaves a bit to be desired and the way Texans are uh, moving the football. I mean, they put up over 500 against the Bengals in Cincinnati last week. Then they go to the Jets at the Titans, home game against the Browns, home game against the Titans, and at the Colts. I mean, I see I see five wins for sure in this game, and I could see them winning six games. Do you want and the, that doesn't even include the Jags? Do you want the Jags schedule? I got the Jags yeah. schedule here. This is this is five, what five it's gonna Jags come down to, right? So the, the Jags get the Titans in Jacksonville, then on the road against the Texans, home against the Bengals, on the road against the Browns, home against the Ravens. And then they finish with Bucks, Panthers, Titans. So there's a pretty tight stretch in there where it's Bengals, Browns, Ravens. And those are the three games coming off that huge game against the Texans. I mean, if the Texans win that game against Jacksonville, pretty much their division to lose at that point when you look at the two schedules moving forward. Well, it, listen, if the, like, let's say these teams both win next week and then Houston is able to beat Jacksonville in that game. You can basically swap the odds right now. The Texans would be minus 250, and the Jags would be plus 280. I, like, Dusty, the reason this line is where it is is because nobody watches the Texans. Yeah. Like, unless you are rolling in a confusion corner on Sunday afternoon <laughs> with seven different games for the early slate, I mean, you're going to get the odd highlight. Like, oh, wow, C.J. Stroud had a great play in the last two minutes. I wonder what happened. You don't see the fact that He's slinging it all over. Dude, CJ Stroud, what, just while we're here, what, where's the MVP? Let's just check the MVP awards right now because I would love to know. I mean, CJ Stroud's minus 2,000 for Offensive Rookie of the Year. They don't have him here. I did see him at some books at 30 to 1. 
I mean, I guess the the longest shot they've got is Tyreek Hill. But I mean, if if the if the Texans go say, if they beat the teams that they should beat, yeah, and win that game against Jacksonville, they could be an eleven or twelve win team. All he's done so far is, as of the moment, second in the league in passing yards, behind league leader Sam Howell. Not sure you had that on the card. Excuse me? Sam Howell <laughs> leads the league in passing yards with 2,783. <laughs> CJ Stroud sitting there at 2626. Um, not a great completion percentage, but you know what is great? 15 touchdowns and two interceptions. Like as a rookie, this dude's not making mistakes, man, which is insanely impressive when you're also second in the league in passing yards and your team relies on you to basically do everything for them, right? So, yeah. I was just about to say, you mentioned the 15 touchdowns and two picks. Like when you look at the at the game log by game by game, like he's throwing the football 35, 40 times oh, yeah. a game sometimes. Yeah, the whole offense I mean, relies isn't just around him. protecting a rookie quarterback and relying on a running game the running game is garbage take it from me damian pierce owner can't even get in the lineup it was devin singletary that went off on uh, on last week like i cannot say enough about D'Amico ryan's he let's see coach of the year huh. so a lot of love for dan campbell right now he's at plus 160 but D'Amico ryan's at plus 325 also good value yeah like I mean, to me, it, it has to be one of those two guys. I know Mike McDaniel was tied with Dan Campbell a couple weeks ago. Well, KOC has emerged in the coach of the year. Like he wasn't even on the board a couple weeks ago. And O'Connell is now 10 to 1. Um, and, and listen, Mike Tomlin at 15 to 1 probably deserves a little bit more love as well, considering how, how the Steelers seem to be winning all of these games right now. But I think by the end of the season, the Texans are going to be the team that everybody's talking about. How did they do it? Where did this come from? You've been paying attention. We've seen we've seen a lot of signs of it. But, I mean, to me, C.J. Stroud announced himself as not just, hey, I'm here in the NFL. Hey, you can start talking about me, um, you know, amongst the top tier of quarterbacks in the National Football League right now. And, I mean, man, it must be just gut wrenching. If you're a Panthers fan, watching what's happening, knowing that you could trade it all the way up, you yeah. could have taken any yeah. guy. You took Bryce Young; it hasn't gone well, and then C.J. Stroud has just been an absolute beast. And it's great for Texans too, because of course, I mean, Will Anderson's been pretty good, I guess. Um, but if you would told them that they were going to get this production out of the quarterback, <clears throat> they would have traded that next year's first round pick just to make this happen. Uh, I mean, that's how good C.J. Stroud has been. So the fact that they don't have their pick next year and it's Arizona's, um, like that pick is projected to be like 20th. Yeah. The way things are going right now. So plus 280 Texans to win the a AFC South. I think that is going to get not a sprinkle, but a uh, a chunk. Well, and, and I would say you better go get on it immediately if you're watching or listening to the lock shop right now because you know lock shoppers are going to get there and they're going to hammer it. You're not ever going to see it again at plus 280. So you got to hop on that right away. Also, Jake from Cool Bet. And it's kind of got a Jake from State Farm ring to it, doesn't it? When you say Jake from Cool Bet, um, he says they're going to get Stroud listed in the MVP market ASAP. So watch for Perfect. that to pop up too if you want to. Get a little <laughs> sprinkle on it because I would assume he goes from off the board to not like brilliant odds, so probably still really reasonable odds there. As Jake, well. put him in. Jake, start him in there at fifty-five to one with Tyreek, bottom of the board, and then yeah. let us get on it, and then Let's boom, it it'll up go bit. up to twenty-five to one. Well, somebody texted in. Somebody basically texted in and said Stroud is either the MVP favorite or it's Tyreek Hill. Like when you look at the guys that are having these ridiculous seasons right now, that's might not be how it works out in the end, but I can see how you can make a significant case for both of those guys, man. Well, McCaffrey over Hill. I mean, if we're not talking quarterback, I'm taking McCaffrey over Tyreek Hill. Let's see some of these receiving stats here. Like McCaffrey's 20 to one right now. He's the top non quarterback. And just for people listening on the podcast, we'll fill you in here. Mahomes favorite three to one. Jalen Hurts plus 325. Lamar plus 550. Tua six to one. 
Joe Burrow, 17 to one. And that's a future bet. That's like saying, okay, the Bengals are going to run the table. Um, and then McCaffrey's at 20 to one. Josh Allen, you know, I think you can pretty much cross him off the list after last night. He's yeah. 25 to one. Jared Goff, 30 to one. Then he that 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 guy does not get the respect he deserves. No, he doesn't, man. He does right now. Purdy 30 to one, Dak 32 to one, and then uh Trevor Lawrence, not a chance, 40 to one, and uh Tyreek Hill 55 to one. Like Tyreek will be he'll he'll probably what do we have for offensive player of the year? That is not listed right now, I don't think. Yeah, he leads receivers in touchdowns. He leads them in yards. Mind you, A.J. Brown's lurking around in that yards category. They're the only two guys over 1,000 yards right now. Um, whereas Christian McCaffrey obviously does a lot of everything. He's got nine rushing touchdowns. He leads the league in rushing yards as well. Derrick Henry just plugging along, second in the league in rushing yards. <laughs> Everybody's basically retired yeah. him nine times over. But uh, he's at 625 yards as well. Top five in rushing yards right now. Christian McCaffrey, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Travis Etienne, and Zach Moss churning out over 600 yards already in that offense. So this is, a, this is a nice Back thing. Up, uh, yeah, exactly. This, this is a nice thing to every week in the NFL, you know, in addition to just kind of looking ahead to the slate, and then recapping, you know, Tuesday is a great day to kind of reset these futures, right? Because there's always value there. As Huss said, found some really nice value on the Houston Texans, even at the uh, the cost of my Trevor Lawrence love with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And you know what's funny is that in two leagues, I have both Trevor Lawrence and C.J. Stroud, and I am starting C.J. Stroud over my own guy right now. I'm just like, I can't do it. C.J. Stroud's a monster. He's probably, he's. I, I think Mark in the nasty chat made a really good point. Like, in best ball leagues, C.J. Stroud is going to win you a ton of best ball leagues because he would have been taken in, like, the 17th, 18th, 19th round in a best ball league, and you would have just set that roster and left it, and he's going to absolutely How many steal times, the show. Like, you know what? Anyone that had the foresight to grab C.J. Stroud, good for them. Um, Buddy. I, I have a feeling that he was UDFA in most of those leagues. In, in Yeah, oh, yeah, for sure. In my one league... Three weeks ago, I'm sitting at one and six, and I'm like, screw it, I'm done. So I traded Aaron Jones and Amari Cooper to a guy, and I got like three draft picks and quarterback C.J. Stroud coming my way. And C.J. Stroud has won me three weeks in a row, and I'm tied for a playoff spot now. So it's like <laughs> I went to rebuild. I traded for my quarterback of the future, and he's just he's helping me win now. Like he's... He's been absolutely sensational. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how C.J. Stroud and the Texans play out the rest of the way. And what a monster game against the Jacksonville Jaguars in two weeks. And I think that's 11 o'clock. That's an early slate game on a Sunday. So uh, that'll be a good one for sure. Uh, anything else in the NFL, Huss, or should we look at this line movement in the 110th Great Cup? Uh, well, just the only other NFL story, and I'm not sure because I know I came in just a couple minutes after you had started, but... Did you publicly congratulate me for my win over you in fantasy this week? Wow. Was that, was that, is that who I was playing against? Big Red, baby. Oh, dude, I didn't even know you were Big Red. Because I was on the, on the Fantasy Football 5 yesterday. I was talking about that matchup. And, yeah, you had James Cook, right? I had James Cook. You had Cook. James Cook. Yeah. 13 points was all we needed. How hey. about that? The early fumble, which I'm not even sure that they attributed to him. Um, but the the play where he fumbled and it bounced right back into his yeah, hands. And he took off. He ended up going for 60 <laughs> yards. Like that basically is the difference. It was a, a 111 to 107 victory for Big Red. Here's Still that. waiting for my guy Justin Jefferson to get back. Here's in our here's our lineups right now. I I guess I had Kelsey on bye this week. And and Waddle on bye and Higgins is hurt. Anyway, I do have CJ Stroud in that league too. You were starting Baker Mayfield. So CJ <laughs> had 24, Baker had 19. Bajon Robinson who I have finally had a week. He had 17, Cook had 13. You got Jonathan Taylor who you took in that draft and we're like, "Oh, we'll see how that worked out." It worked out for you. He's got 14 points. Stevenson had 11. Amon St. Brown 26 and a half points. I had Godwin in that spot, 7.4. Hopkins and DJ Moore, kind of a wash. Thomas and Hill, kind of a wash. I picked up Tyler Boyd just this week, and actually he got me 15 points. You have Debo, he got you 13. My kicker had 14. 
Well, it was a big, where was it? I guess the Monitor St. Brown was really kind of the, the weak winner for you here, buddy. It was a four point win. Yeah. I mean, that, and yeah, I made up 19 points in that head to head because otherwise, if yeah. you had me by five, yeah, that was a big one in the quarterback. Anyways, it was a, uh, was it, and that's bit that was big because if it had gone the other way, we're both five, five and five. five. Yeah. No, that was, uh, so the, um, the week 10 wins for playoff. Can you believe this? Like, just, before we get to the great cup, we were talking about what a great week it was in the lock shop. The statistic, the statistical possibilities of being in seven different fantasy leagues, all with different rosters and going seven and zero, oh, has got to be 1%. That was me this week. Everything, everything. You hit all seven. Back. No way. Like, I was seven and, oh. and again, it's not like I have the same team, like just the same guys. And they went off. I mean, there's a few guys that I've leaned on a little bit more. I've got lots of them on Ross St. Brown, Brian Robinson Jr. from the yeah uh, yeah the big commander week. yeah had that big one. So you got some Jalen Warren sprinkled in there, don't you? I of course I've got Jalen Warren. Jalen Warren was one of my late pickups, and I'm now starting him in a few leagues because I've got pretty weak. Uh, I I spent a lot of money on Zach Moss early in the season on uh, on waivers, um, and he was awesome for me for a little while. Yeah. But I only have Jonathan Taylor in the one league. So now I'm sort of like in, in one, I basically played Gibbs and Montgomery. Well, that worked out. No, <laughs> I For sure. And I think that, you know, there'll be more and more situations where, you know, the, if you have the receivers to do it, it almost makes sense. Um, put those guys in, you know, you've got a solid, probably 25 points or so from those guys and make it out the rest. But uh, I don't know whether I can continue with Baker Mayfield as my quarterback, <laughs> uh, I, Kirk Cousins was so great. I was like, literally, it was just cuz. But, uh, hey, you know what? I'll take the 20 points from Baker. Thank you very much. But, uh, yeah, let's get to uh, let's get to this great cup because, as expected, there's some people that are thinking the Winnipeg Blue Bombers were maybe a little undervalued in that opening line. Yes, it has moved from seven and a half, and in 24 hours, likely even less, I don't know when this got to, Eight and a half, but the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are now eight and a half point favorites in the Grey Cup, Huss. Uh, we knew you were on them at seven and a half. You wanted to get in there quickly because you were expecting the line to move. Uh, let me ask you this. How much further do you think it goes? I I would be... I doubt it gets to 10, but I think it's probably in the nine range. Does it get to the nine, nine and a half? Like, I don't think it's coming back to seven and a half. Put it that way. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would be surprised. I think we're going to talk. I mean, I mean, like, unless something happens where, you know, there's some announcements that there's some other guys from the Bombers that we don't expect to play. I mean, Cody Fajardo is eight, uh, oh, and nine yeah. against Zach Caleros. I mean, and he's pumped he's getting another chance at the Bombers, but I kind of have this, you know, be careful what you wish for. I mean, enjoy Great Cup Week, Cody, because I think Sunday's not going to be as fun as the rest of the week. Put it that way. Um, and now with Big Hill hurt, like, you know, they've got the athletes to go in and, and, and fill his spot. It's a matter of, like, I think this will almost be a rallying point for everybody on that team because of what a – what a beloved leader he's been and what a huge part of this has been for the last little while. Um, and I'll tell you what, I think Zach Caleros is a monster game. I know that it was very, very low key when it came to the passing game, when, uh, you know, in the BC game on the weekend, but I think Zach's going to be there and try and put a real stamp on the history that he's making um, winning three or four right now. So right now, 8.5 for the bombers and it's minus minus one twelve. Uh, I think we could basically see nine, nine and a half on the weekend. I doubt it gets to 10. Um, and I see the money line's gone up quite a bit as well. I mean, the money line was minus 333 yesterday. It's now minus 385. The Alouettes was my, it was plus 250 yesterday. That's now up to plus 305. So uh, we're still a little ways away from getting the props. And as I say, I need the sack total. Like I need air right now. <laughs> Give me the sack total. Get it to me. Get it to me. They played twice this year, 47-17 and 17-3 to three wins. So the Bombers beat them by at least 14 both times, 14 and 30 times. Um, oh, yeah, quick to note, quick to note, that 47-17 yeah. game, uh, the two touchdowns were both pick sixes. Oh, they were. The That's right. 
the Montreal offense scored th- two field scored goals. Six points two field goals this in season against eight quarters them. against the Bombers. So I've got some good numbers here. Uh, John Pearlberg, who's one of our great stats guys at TSN, just a just a little bit deeper into Cody Fajardo versus Zach Kolaros in the career. Okay, uh, they've played nine times in those nine games. The average points have been twenty nine point six to thirteen point one. Completion percentages, you know, Cody's not bad in those games. Zach's thrown for just over 2,200 yards. Cody's thrown for just over 2,100 yards. Uh, Zach, in those nine head-to-heads against Cody Fajardo, has 21 touchdowns and eight interceptions. Cody Fajardo has one touchdown and nine interceptions. So Zach, in the head-to-head meetings, has thrown 20 more touchdowns than Cody Fajardo, and Fajardo has only thrown one touchdown in nine games against Zach Kolaris. Now, Zach's been part of teams that have had some really good defenses along the way, but that's about as lopsided it can get. And then I love this. Go ahead, us. He still is. Yeah, I know. I know. He was Uh, part of a team that's very Ask Vernon Adams. So, Fajardo, in his career, has a 696 winning percentage against all other quarterbacks he's ever faced. He's 39 and 17 in those games. Nine losses to Zach Kolaris. So, I mean, a third, a third, a third of his career losses have come at the hands of the guy he's about to face in the uh, in the Great Cup, which is just, I mean, that's a, those are wild numbers, man. That's nuts. It, it, <laughs> I mean, I guess you could only get that sort of thing in a smaller nine-team league. <laughs> yeah, but. It really is amazing. And you know what, Cody? I, I was impressed with him, his interview yesterday after a landing at that uh, military airport or museum or whatever. Um, you know, listen, he's obviously really proud of what they were able to do against Toronto, as he should be. Very excited. And he said, I'm excited to get another crack at these guys. They're, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it hasn't, I believe his term was, it hasn't gone my way before. <laughs> He's such a good dude, man. Like I like to see Cody Fajardo have success, but he's just always thrown at these really tough spots against a really good. Like it's a tough, it's a tough guy who has to play like these dynasty bombers most of the time. You know, like it's just. Hey, here, here's a question, and I know we're sort of out of Winnipeg and Edmonton, but I have a feeling there might be a few Saskies in here in the lock shop. If you are a Ryder fan, what would you rather see, the Bombers? Put the exclamation mark and complete. Oh, this is a an great question. An unequivocal dynasty, <laughs> or the guys that you let walk, Jason Moss and Cody Fajardo, go to Montreal of all places, beat a sixteen and two Toronto team in the East final, and beat the Bombers. In Cody Fajardo's case, for the first time ever, to win the Grey Cup. Not even a year after being cut loose by the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, in a lot of ways, being made the scapegoats. Buddy, that's who such, you got. I mean, fan. who you got? I I would I would think this is the way. Like I I I live in a very petty market here in Edmonton as well, with Oilers <laughs> fans and coaches and players who've moved on. Right. I would think that Riders fans are probably so angry right now. They'd like to see Moss and Fajardo win so they can just look at the current management group and see, see, you had these guys and you let them go. This is on you. I yeah. feel like that's probably the way. Plus, then they have the anti-bomber angle on it as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a win. Like, it, it, if the Bombers were to lose to Cody Fajardo, I think most Ryder fans would actually feel pretty damn good for Cody. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, you'd have to really... Like, it wasn't like he said, screw you, and left as a free agent. There's no way that I'm coming back and went and took more money. I mean, they let him go. They basically said, you're not coming back. Good luck. Uh, what do they say on those emails? Um, best of luck in future endeavors. He got the best of luck in future endeavors email. So <laughs> he his future endeavors in Montreal have been pretty good. Um, they finally beat one of the top teams this year. But again, they're moving up a weight class. Although, listen, Toronto was in that weight class all year long. They were the standard, but they didn't play like it. And the one thing I can personally guarantee you is that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will not be turning the football over nine no, times. No, there's no chance. And uh, 
and, and, and in a way, I'm almost more confident about this because don't think that Zach, Zach was so pissed off about those two pick sixes. Like they won by 30. He was still angry at the end of that. Yeah. He was mad and he was mad at practice about it the next week. <laughs> like he was still there. So, um, listen, this is shaping up to be, it's, I mean, it's a really interesting matchup. I, I'd say it's shaping up to be a great game. I'd feel a lot more confident about that with Toronto because I still think that, I mean, I, I can't believe they lost. Yeah. I can't believe they lost in the fashion that they did. Um, but for the Bombers, you got to play whoever's on the schedule. And in this case, it's a team that, you know, they're going to need to be prepared. They're going to need to be ready. They can't just assume that they're going to roll over these guys the way they did in the regular season. And, you know, you have to respect your opponent. But the Bombers absolutely do do that. And I think between that Montreal game with the mistakes that Zach made, although they still won by 30, and the bitter taste of just a few mistakes costing them last year's Grey Cup yeah. by one point against Toronto. I mean, I'm, uh, again, I don't want to get too overconfident, cocky, but I love the Bombers this week. And I think that they are ready to, uh, they're ready to complete the destiny and make it a dynasty. And uh, I mean, hey, this, and, and this is a crucial point for these guys because you really don't know Dusty. I think there was a lot of questions earlier this year about, you know, geez, are the Bombers getting. Is the old line a little, a little old? Too? And, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, hey, listen, Big Hill, a bunch of those guys, I mean, they don't have a ton of time left. So this is the opportunity. Sunday is the day. Uh, and Hamilton is the place, and uh, I cannot wait to uh, can get out there. <laughs> it, Norm in a combine, damn, just took Montreal to win. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> That's okay. He said he got on the Texans earlier at plus two eighty, yeah. so it'll be. We're gonna uh, make up that Montreal bet with that Texans we'll future. Get that Norm back. Combine. Get that back, buddy, for sure. Uh, all right, Hustle. Let's dive over to the National Hockey League, man. Pretty busy. It's Tuesday. We got a good Tuesday slate. Um, might, might as well build a little three gamer here, I would think, with the amount of options we've got tonight. Yeah, let me just quickly, while we take a look at the board, throw out uh, the guys wanted a, a WST parlor. We got the Devils in town to take on the Jets tonight. Ooh, it's kind of a bummer that. Um, I mean, listen, I want them to win, so no Jack Hughes, no Nico Heischer. That's obviously a, a good thing uh, that you don't have to face those guys does suck a little bit this is their one trip of the year and now one of the uh, most exciting players in the league won't be on the ice that being said Nikolai Ehlers is heating up right now he is very much due to score had arguably his best game of the season against Dallas on Saturday I think Ehlers scores Cole Perfetti playing with Ehlers has been great as of late playing on the top power play we've got a Cole Perfetti point Ehlers goal Jets to win on the money line, plus 580. So as I say, I won't be putting, although I do like the Jets. Um, and that number actually has gone, has moved quite a bit. Yesterday, they were, when the, when it first came out, the Jets were minus 126. Jets now minus 143 um, for this game. But um, I do uh, I do like that one. But as far as our three-gamer, let's uh, let's take a look at some of these other games. Yeah, let's Boston at Buff or uh, the Sabres at home to the Bruins, Buffalo plus 133, Boston minus 157. We've got the Penguins in Columbus to take on the Blue Jackets, the struggling Blue Jackets, Penguins minus 174, Flames minus 150 in Montreal against the Canadians, Habs plus 127. Uh, Vegas minus 155 in Washington. Vegas was at the White House yesterday. Yes, they were. I was getting, I was getting, uh, getting pictures texted to me from Gary Lawless as he <laughs> hobnobbed. Oh, my goodness. All the, all the heads of state and uh, and whatnot. Pretty pretty hilarious stuff. Uh, Dallas home to the Coyotes. Um, coming off that win in Winnipeg. And I guess they pumped Minnesota as well. 8-3 on Sunday night. So this is the third and four nights, but they are back at home. Had a day off yesterday to rest. Uh, Ducks at Predators, minus 172 for the Preds at home. They're not very good right now. Hey, I, don't, I tell you what, I'm definitely not on the Preds <laughs> at that number. I just, yeah. 
Uh, I'm going to pull up starting goalies. Yeah, I, I, have, I have the starting goalies here, Huss. I can, I can whip you through those. I've got uh, – here's what we've got so far tonight uh, as far as confirmed and likely. Pittsburgh and Columbus, Merzilkins. Uh, Merzilkins is confirmed. Tristan Jari is likely. Uh, Lindgren for the Capitals. Uh, Logan Thompson likely for Vegas. Uh, Montembeau and Markstrom in that Calgary-Montreal game. Olmark and uh, uh, Levy with Buffalo. Hellebuck. And Akira Schmid is likely. UC Saros is likely. John Gibson is confirmed. Jonas Johansson's confirmed for Tampa. Bennington likely for St. Louis. Ottinger confirmed for Dallas. Vamelka unconfirmed at this point for the Coyotes. And then Anthony Stolarz for the Florida Panthers. And Mackenzie Blackwood for the San Jose Sharks. Those are your starting goalies tonight in the NHL. Yes, so uh, Blackwood's been pretty good lately. Um the Oilers will know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, just quickly before the picks, how's the uh, how's the text line? People right back on the wagon, ready to roll here now with, with two wins in a hey, row uh, under the new coach. As we so say in this market, hey. Hustle, wins a win. Uh, even though yeah. you only had 14 shots on goal through two periods against an Islanders team that has zero offensive jam. Um, they, you know what? They, they basically, the Oilers sort of like played a tight, Islanders style. I thought the Islanders dictated the first two periods. Oilers got a couple of power plays in the third, banged in a couple of quick power play goals, and then added an empty netter and got business taken care of. It was by no means a dominant, oh my God, the new coach has got them going crazy performance, but they have a two game winning streak for the first time this season. So they'll take that and they get Seattle again, and then they go on a four game road trip out east Tampa, Florida, Carolina, and Washington. So and McDavid scored. McDavid scored. It was uh should have been stopped, but he'll take it at this point. Yeah, you know, like Did you get it. the ESP parlay yesterday? Uh no, you know how we missed it? We had McDavid for a goal, McDavid two plus points. We had the uh, Oilers and Reg. We missed it on the five and a half and ended up finishing at five. We only needed over five and a half, so we missed it by a goal. Oh, yeah. that was it. Yeah, because I I remember yeah. what the uh, what the player props were in there. Yeah. We uh we missed that one, so that was that was tough. Um, as for the NHL tonight here, man, like uh, I don't know, is there anything that really jumped? There's nothing that really. I was on earlier today on our show. I I went with Vegas in regulation tonight because it's a juicy number at plus one hundred six. Um, but I don't know. How do you think the whole visiting the White House and everything impacts a team? I, I don't think it impacts them very much. I think they probably had a good day and they're back to work. I mean, this team is this team is so deep. They're so consistent. I, I mean, very rarely do you see the Vegas Golden Knights not show up and play at or near a certain level. And I give Bruce Cassidy a ton of credit for that. I like Vegas tonight. I mean, I think maybe with this game on the road, maybe we just go money line. Because we're going to put into a parlay anyway, right? And it's minus 155, yeah. so... Exactly. Um, what about Calgary? Markstrom versus Montebo. This is sort of that desperate team spot. They absolutely have to have this. But they lost an OT to the Leafs, and then they lost to the Sens on Saturday night. They got to salvage something from this road. Two trip. wins in their last 10. But you are right. I mean, coming out here, losing to Toronto in a shootout, and then losing to Ottawa... This is a classic salvage spot to come away with something. Montreal just lost to Vancouver 5-2. Had beaten Boston and Detroit prior to that, but prior to that, they'd lost four in a row. So yeah, I don't hate I don't hate the Calgary. I don't hate the Calgary road spot tonight at minus 150. Unless we so just we think throw? Calgary is a like maybe they're just brutal, man. Like maybe they shouldn't be favored on the road, you know? Like I mean, I don't know. I've had it's funny because maybe I've just been on them at the right time, but I mean, they haven't won a lot of games and they have come through for uh, for me a couple times here so far. The game that I'm very nervous about that I don't want to touch is this Arizona Dallas game. Dallas has been so good lately. They had that big win, or two big wins on the weekend. I have a feeling like if there ever was going to be a letdown, a little bit spot, of a letdown spot. I, I, I have a feeling like this game could absolutely go to overtime and then you could go either way, even though they've got Ottinger in. What about Tampa and St. Louis? 
Well, this is an interesting one because which side are you thinking here? I'm thinking Tampa. I think that the St. Louis is, I mean, Tampa has not been very good. They just lost four, nothing to Chicago or sorry, four, nothing to the hurricanes. And they lost five, three to the black. I know and St. St. Louis has won four or five and just put up eight on Colorado. So I'm St. Louis has won four of five. They've won four of five, man. They they beat the Devils. They beat the Habs. They lost to the Jets. That's their only loss in like the last ten days. And then they, I guess that's why I'm yeah. That's why I'm feeling yeah. They beat Arizona and then they absolutely walloped Colorado. Okay, wh- what? When was this? I I completely missed this eight two game. <laughs> Like what? Yeah, what day was that? I I can try to think. It must have been like buried on uh let's see here. When was it? Was game? it like a late Saturday game or something? It was on we it was on the, the it was on the eleventh, which would have been Saturday. Yeah, Saturday. Saturday, everything was just you were on a you were on a heater that on Saturday, game, probably. So that game that, that game Jack Johnson scored with twenty eight seconds left to make it eight two. It was eight to one. Oh, <laughs> Okay, maybe I don't feel so good about that. I still think Tampa is better. And I guess, you know, I'm basing a lot of this on seeing what the Jets did to St. Louis yeah. in St. Louis last week. So did week. St. Louis just look brutal in that game or what? Dude, the Jets have played St. Louis twice this year, and it has been, I mean, they have just dominated pretty much all six periods. I mean, they're just a step ahead of them. I mean, maybe that's just a credit to how the Jets are playing right now. Um but yes, yeah, St. Louis all of a sudden seven five and one. Maybe they are a little hot. Well, okay, let's just maybe stay away from that game. <laughs> um, Panthers Sharks. Let's see what what's the Panthers in reg number one sixty four in reg. Uh, or puck line is it's almost plus. I think. What's it at? I looked at it earlier. It's minus one yeah, four. So if we put if we if we took Vegas, Calgary, and the Florida puck line, we get it to plus one forty eight, plus four thirty eight. If we take it in reg instead, it's at plus three forty one. I think I like the puck line. Let's do it. That's okay. three forty one. Too low for a lock shop partner. Yeah, probably. exactly. All right. So Vegas, uh, Jake, if you're watching, Vegas money line. Calgary money line and then Florida on the puck line minus 104 for a lock shop part plus 438 party. we'll probably get get we'll probably be able to get that close to right, uh, close to five to one close to five to one yep. no I like that uh Huss what's coming up on Winnipeg sports talk today buddy well we've got a whole bunch of stuff going on tonight Dusty we've got the um uh, Hammer's going to join us from uh, from Hamil- Jeff Hamilton. Will join us from Hamilton. Uh, he just got there, getting ready for Grey Cup. We'll do a quick check in with him. We'll have him on live with us when we get out. Got to talk uh, balance schedules. Balance schedules are back. Home and home with that's happening. Home and home. Randy Ambrosi announced it today. Home and home with every team in the league next year, and then a couple of other extra games. I would hopefully assume against rivals. So, yeah. <laughs> About time. How did this take so long? Like, keep the East and West if you want. Make it one division. I don't care. But for crying out loud, folks. I mean, it was just so dumb. You have that incredible Grey Cup last year, and the Bombers and Argos aren't scheduled to play at all until September 29th. It's their only matchup of the year. And by that time, the Argos had already finished it up. I realize picking schedules is very difficult. There's lots that goes into it. But, uh... That is great news. That is absolutely great news. So, yeah, we will get to some of the details just coming out of the uh, the coach. Mo Khan will join us. We'll get the perspective from Montreal on the game. Um, and then a lot of uh, a lot of hockey talk. Uh, Mike McIntyre coming up. Uh, we'll tee up tonight's Jets-Devils matchup. And uh, SOB, Shane O'Brien as well, coming on the show today. We'll... Uh, Maybe get a few funny stories from SOB and see what's going on with the missing curfew guys. I uh I got I got we got to this one text here before I let you go. It came in 780-218-9999. Some good text messages. This one's good too. Gary Lawless stole two White House pens in an ashtray. 
I like that one. Uh, but this one's good. I'd rather crawl a mile on my hands and knees on broken glass than to see Cody Fajardo win a Grey Cup. Sask fan forever. So, really? Yeah. So, so Sask fan would rather see the Bombers. Yes. Win a third Grey Cup in four then years. Cody be Fajardo. Referred to as a dynasty than seeing that. That, my friends, is as petty as you get. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Winnipeg Sports Talk is coming up. We're going to have Fantasy Football 5 here quickly, and then two guys and a goalie and lots to get to around the National Hockey League. No doubt about that. Huss, uh, I'll text you after the show today, buddy. Yeah, it sounds good, and we'll figure out what the rest yes, of this week exactly. is going to look like. It's going uh, to be wild. We'll find something. Uh, good luck, Lock Shoppers. Texans, plus 280. Win the division. Let's go. That's going to do it for the Lock Shop. We'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, Fantasy Football 5. Matt, you can kill the lock shop graphics. I'm going to change that when we eventually get there. Fantasy Football 5 brought to you by our great partners at Century Casino, Fort Road, the Sports Bar and Lounge, Lieutenant Eric and his gang of merry men and Renee every Monday and Thursday. You got to get there Thursday. You got to get there Sunday because they're giving away a trip here right away to the Browns and the Rams in Los Angeles. La La Land. You can be heading on down there courtesy of Century Casino over on Fort Road. If you have any fancy football questions, right now would be the time. 780-218-9999. 780-218-9999. Let's get to this one quickly. It's not fantasy football related, but hey, you can hit us up in the uh, nasty chat as well. Uh, Mark, I do see, I know Ken Dorsey, he was fired uh, earlier this morning. Hey guys, I'm ordering one of those bomb EST hoodies. I'm tall, not fat. So curious if I'd be a large or an XL. I know for me, and I am both tall and fat, um, like the double XL, it it fits, but it fits kind of slimish. So for an XL, I think if I'm a tall guy, I think I probably get the XL. If you're a tall guy. What do you think, Matt? You're kind of yeah, well, tallish. Well, but I'm I'm... I border between small and mediums Yeah. on my clothing. I have a medium for the hoodie, and it fits nice. Okay. It's not snug. It's not tight on me. Okay. I feel like it's a little slightly looser. I feel like it's it's a true to feel, a true to fit. Okay, I yeah, that might be it. fair. I would say it's true to fit. So what, whatever you normally are, I would say is what you should get for this. I, don't, I, don't, I wouldn't sit here and say we're more sli- slim fit or anything like that or baggier. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very true to size. Okay. Yeah, like everyone. The, it's, it's all, and the weird part is everyone's there's personal preferences for everyone, right? It's so that's true. I like things that actually fit a little tighter. Yeah, you do, and I'm I'm a loosey I'm a loosey yeah. goosey guy. So, so it's uh, like the double XL fits well enough that I will wear it. I just think like when I get like a, let's say a black one or a navy one, I guess I could get that done today, tomorrow. I, I might get the triple. And I usually don't have any triples, but I think it would just be a little bit more comfortable. But the I've t-shirt, the t-shirt's a double, and it fits great. Okay, so it's like. I think it comes down to, I mean, the material that the things are made with, I guess. Have you tried on one of, like, the non-hooded sweat? Like, did you ever get a look at that? Does anybody get a sweatshirt? Get yeah, the sweatshirt? Yeah. I'm getting it before anyone else. Are you going to get it? I ordered, because I put, got one for me coming with the, the first order we okay. have in. So that's coming. All right. So, yeah. Our, oh, we've never tried the champion shirt sweater, though. No. So it's like, no, but, that's but it's a champion, so it's like how that fits. And I do feel like that might be a little bit tighter, but I guess we'll find out. I would... Uh, I would hop on it. You got to go now because it's gonna. Tomorrow's the last day for our pop up store, the EST shop. So go to EdmontonSportsTalk.com, click on shop, and get your swag now. We'll hammer that out tomorrow morning on the show as well. Uh, Louis wondering, hey, how come the post game show from last night didn't get uploaded onto? Uh, did it get podcast last night? The post game show. There. It should be there. It, he says it's, um, uh, you can't see it on Spotify. I'm just going on Spotify. I'm, right I'm double checking myself on uh, an app right now. I mean, if it's up somewhere, it should be up everywhere. I would think, unless it's. Uh, let's see here. Updated Monday. Post game shows on there. Yeah, it's on there. Is yours on there? It's on uh, on on, on uh, it's on Apple. It's not showing up on the. Sp- uh... Might just have to like refresh. No, like, it's not uh, showing up on my Spotify. Yeah, so you might we might have to go in and just like republish it. That's it weird. It it's supposed it to go all the there. way. Yeah, no, That's I know. Sometimes I had that happen one other time. I think with like a two guys a goalie or something. On it. 
Um, this text is in 780. I'm going to take a look at some waiver wire targets as well. Uh, 780-218-9999 or in the nasty chat. Uh, Rick and Jasper says, drop Jamal Williams to try to grab Chandler. What say you? Uh, I say yes. I think I would probably do that. Chandler is up right near the top of the waiver wire rankings with Madison being concussed. Obviously, that's something that you'll have to monitor moving forward. Um, but yeah, I mean, some guys you can look at. I'm a little surprised. Like Devin Singletary is only 50% rostered in in most leagues. And Devin, Sing- Devin Singletary and that Texans offense is absolutely becoming a juggernaut. And I picked him up like three weeks ago, two weeks ago. Was it two or three weeks ago? Anyway, I picked him up and I was like, damn it. Like he was like, there was nobody basically left on the waiver wire except for Devin Singletary. Damian Pierce is healthy. So I was like, screw it. I need somebody that I can at least start who's going to get some touches. So I did, and he actually had me, what do you have this week? 20, let me see quickly. I think he had like 20, 20 some points. One Raccoon Football League, Devin Singletary. 23, 23 points this week. 30 carries, 150 yards, a touchdown. Now that's not going to happen all the time, but Singletary is kind of, like, at times so far this year, he's looked like that guy that Buffalo just never really gave opportunity to. They're just like, oh, Singletary's not the guy. Singletary's not the guy. Um, maybe you blame Dorsey for that. He's out. So, Singletary, Ty Chandler, uh, this is a guy that's going to be, like, the big fab guy this week. I would think in most of your leagues, he's owned in, like, 6% of leagues. Keaton Mitchell actually paid off for me last week. He was my big fab guy. He came in, double-digit points. He's still only 36% owned in leagues. Demario Douglas... With the New England Patriots, 32% owned in leagues. This guy here, I'd put even higher than Demario Douglas on the list. Noah Brown with Houston. I know that Nico Collins was out this week, and it's different. But I honestly, I think you've gotten to the point in three wide receiver and a flex leagues, or even depending on what the bye week situation is, I think there's a case that you can make that with C.J. Stroud at quarterback, Nico Collins, Tank Dell, and Noah Brown are all startable with different expectations, obviously. Brandon Cooks had a huge week. Has it finally clicked, or are you going to buy into him? And that's like the one-off. But Brandon Cooks had a huge week. He's only 44% owned in leagues. Um, And Rico Dowdle, he had a touchdown this week. Garbage time touchdown. But Tony Pollard cannot score a touchdown to save his life. So that's a guy that you could kind of stash for now. I had him on some leagues in a little bit uh, deeper leagues as well. So, um, yeah, that's a look at the the waiver wire so far. I mean, the top three that I would really like, if you find, if you can find Singletary, I'd get him. Chandler and Noah Brown would probably be the top three targets for me this week. And Charbonnet with Seattle's... I don't know. I'm I'm not there just yet, but he would be a top 10 guy, I would think. Hey, I just got a I just got an email from our sticker and deco company. Our stickers have been delivered. They say, well, it says rescheduled delivery, but it also says here your delivery has been completed. So my family's at home today. These would have been dropped off. Well, maybe. In fact, they might actually have it up. Tam, text me if the stickers arrived. That'd be great. Well, maybe, though, it's it's rescheduled, so the first one is, quote-unquote, done, and now there's the new date? I guess we'll find out when I get home. I hope that's not but the case. But stickers and decals are, uh, are ready to go. I'm going to cover my entire truck in decals. You're just going to see EST logos. I don't even know if we have enough to do that, probably. No, because I need, like, half of them. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, I'll cover them in the rest. The rest of them will cover the truck. Uh, all right, that's going to do it for the Fantasy Football 5. We've got a lot to get to with two guys and a goalie today. Like, the Oilers alone could take us through this. But we've got a manslaughter arrest in the death of Adam Johnson. We've got them talking about changing rules in overtime and how that would look as well. And then, obviously, a ton on the Edmonton Oilers. Myself, Walking Gage, Matt Cassie, and the boys are locked and loaded, ready to go. Don't go anywhere. Two guys and a goalie starting almost right away. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure that autoplay is on. We will take you right on over.